Hello, dear friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all in an abundant manner with His word, with His thoughts. May He enlighten the understanding of each of you so you may all know and have the understanding, the understanding of God's will for your life. Pay attention. We are going to start this Saturday midnight, the fast of Daniel, during 21 days. It's for those who are interested, it's not for everyone, but those who are truly seeking to have a new life, those who are seeking to have a closer and more intimate relationship with God. There is no more intimate, but relationship with God. And this is only possible with the Holy Spirit within you. So I would like you to pay attention to what it means to be baptized in the Holy Spirit or to be sealed by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Pay attention. In the Old Testament, there, in the Old Testament, the Bible says that Moses took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and all that was in it, all that was in the tabernacle was anointed by Moses with the anointing oil and consecrated them, which means that the anointing oil which Moses used to anoint all the utensils, all the utensils, all of them, the tabernacle and every utensil in it, and that anointed oil separated, consecrated that place so that then the Ark of the Covenant, the sign of God's covenant with His people, God amongst His people, would then be there inside of the tabernacle. It was the place called the Holy of Holies. So, if you would go today there in the Temple of Solomon, you are going to see the tabernacle, a replica of the one that was built in the past by Moses. And all the utensils, all of them, every single one of them, all the utensils there in, in the room of the tabernacle, as well as it, well, it was inside of the tabernacle, was consecrated with the anointing oil in order for it to be sanctified, meaning for it to be separated, consecrated for the exclusive use of God's work. And there, the Ark of Covenant was placed in, in a special compartment in a place called the Holy of Holies. The Ark of the Covenant was placed there. Very well. Everything was anointed and consecrated. What for? For God's work amongst men. It was God's presence amongst His people. Later on, in the time of Solomon, the temple was then built, and Solomon's temple was built with all the wealth, all the glory, but also there was an anointing. There had to be an anointing as well, so that it could be used for God's work. So all the utensils, everything was consecrated, as well as in the times of Moses, the priests there in the tabernacle had to be consecrated to the Lord. They had to be 
manifesting in their character holiness to the Lord, God's holiness, divine holiness. Nowadays, after the coming of the Lord Jesus, this tabernacle are, or better yet, this tabernacle or this temple are people who are sealed, anointed, those who received the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So, the tabernacle today, the tabernacle as well as the temple today, it's you and I and everyone that has been sealed, consecrated by the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. It's Jesus, it's the Lord Jesus who baptizes us in the Holy Spirit. He is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. So when a person is baptized in the Holy Spirit, they become the temple of the Almighty. They live to serve God here on earth as witnesses, living witnesses of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Because, for example, how could I be, be a witness to someone who was born, lived and died more than 2,000 years ago? It's not possible. It's impossible. Unless that the Spirit of His will have come upon me and was incarnated in me, then yes, with His Spirit in me, I have the conditions to testify to the entire world that Jesus is alive, that He exists, that God exists, and that He is the same. What he was in the past, he is in the present and will be into the future. This is the purpose of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In order for you, dear friend, to be a living witness of Jesus in your house, in your workplace, at school, on the streets, everywhere you go. If you have the Holy Spirit, you have integrity, your character is according to God's character, you naturally exude the good fragrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. You naturally have the mind of the Lord Jesus. And whoever has the mind of the Lord Jesus wants the best for their neighbor. They want the best for their neighbor. So, you, dear friend, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you will have a character that is according to the character of God. So, you will be a witness, a living witness of Jesus here on earth. Meaning, you will sanctify the name of the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac and Israel, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. With your own life, you will then be that person that was anointed for the work of God then you will sanctify the name of the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is not possible unless there is this anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's not possible. It's not possible for a human being that is already born in sin, having a sinful nature, to sanctify God's name here on earth, unless that person is sealed with the Holy Spirit. So, the baptism in the Holy Spirit doesn't have the purpose of changing a person's life in 
a financial aspect to have success in the family, success in your physical, material life. This happens naturally. This happens, of course, because you are serving God. Then God will take care of his servants. Yes or no? So those who serve God, from God receive the daily bread. However, when a person claims to have the Holy Spirit, but their life, their character, their integrity doesn't sanctify the name of Jesus, this means others cannot see in them the character of God. People cannot see in them a divine person. Then this person profanes God's name. They profane the name of the Lord. And I want to tell you that Moses himself, who spoke to God face to face, who saw God from his back, he was intimate with God. But when Moses didn't sanctify the Lord in the presence of the children of Israel, when God told him to touch the, the rock of Meribah so that water could come from it, and Moses was upset and touched the rock twice, he didn't sanctify the name of God. So God punished him, saying, you didn't sanctify my name before my people, so you are not going to enter the promised land. Moses insisted, Moses prayed, but God said, don't talk about this anymore, it's been decided already. So you can notice how, or how it happens, what happens when a person profanes God's name. They are rejected. Of course, that Moses wasn't rejected. He wasn't rejected. But he didn't enter the promised land, the place he so desired to enter and to step on that land. God didn't allow him to go because he failed in regards to sanctifying God before the people of Israel. Dear friend, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is as though, in a very simple, in a very cheap and, and common way to explain this, you can you will be able to understand. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is as though you would win the lottery of all the countries in the world, all by yourself. You would make so much, but so much money, that you don't even know what to do with that much money. The wealth of having the Holy Spirit is so great that there are no words to express His greatness. Because imagine God dwelled, God lived there amongst the people with the tabernacle built there by Moses in the desert. And then later on He dwelled with His people in the Temple of Solomon. And today, God doesn't dwell in temples, in a house, but He dwells in the lives of those who have Him as the Lord and Savior, those who have received the Holy Spirit. So imagine you you having the Almighty God, the unknown God to the world, but not to those who have received Him and have Him within them, which is the Holy Spirit. So, I would like you to understand this well. God the Father, God the Father used the God Son the Lord Jesus, to anoint those 
who have him as the Lord and Savior, as living witnesses of his power here on earth. And this anointing is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. This is very nice, isn't it? It's very glorious. Did you understand? So it's worth you making every effort and sacrificing and investing your entire life, your spirit, your soul, your body. It's worth you immersing in this idea that God is passing on to you. Do you want my spirit? Then place your entire life on the altar. Everything, your dreams, your personal projects, your vanities, your sins, your mistakes, your habits, your way of being, your personal opinions, put everything, the entire package of your life, 100% of it, Put it there on the altar. Here it is, my Father. You say like this, Here I am, Lord, on your altar. There in Israel, there is a word called Hineni. Hineni means the following. Here I am, a hundred percent of me. They don't say this anymore there because they don't do that. This is only done between a person and God. When a person truly gives themselves in spirit, soul, and body, a hundred percent. It's their all for God's all. Literally, that's what it is. So, a person that says like this, Bishop, what do I do in order to receive the Holy Spirit? Well, what I'm telling you here. You have to put yourself entirely, 100%, totally. You have to immerse all of your life, everything. It's all of you. It's not just the money. It's not just the goods. Because this is easy. The difficult part to give on the altar is the passions of the heart, the desires, the projects and dreams, the vanities. This is difficult. This is difficult. You know what you have to do. You even want to do it. It's here in your mind. But here in your heart, there is a certain rejection, which is natural. Because the heart is deceiving, the heart wants to be satisfied, the heart wants an emotion, the heart wants sensations. And this contradicts the will of God. So you have to contradict your heart. If you want to receive the Holy Spirit, for example, 21 days of fast of information and entertainment, social media, and blah, 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 and emotions, and cheap talk with other people, all of these you are going to put to the side. You are going to refuse it. Your thoughts are going to be 24 hours for 21 days upon the Word of God. Everything that doesn't regard the Word of God, you are going to avoid. Everything. Of course, that you have to work, you have to do your things, you're going to do them, but your thoughts are going to always be thinking of the thoughts of God. That's what the fast of Daniel is. And on top of that, you are going to do good to your neighbor. You are going to do something good to them. For example, that person that you live with, that is near you, your husband, your wife, or your children, parents, a colleague from work, that person that you don't really get along with, then you are going to treat them differently with honor. You are going to lower the tone of your voice. You are going to speak to them in a kind, sweet way, in a way that they will see a difference in you towards them. You are going to do this good to them. Or, like I suggested yesterday, you buy a book, a book from the church that blessed your life the most. Like, for example, the Bible. The Bible blessed you. Then buy a Bible and give to that person that is your neighbor. 
or a book, a spiritual book that speaks of faith in the universal church. We have several books, a, a, a vast literature that you can choose one that will meet the need of that neighbor of yours. You are going to do good to somebody. You are going to do good to them. That person that you wouldn't compliment your neighbor, then you are going to start saying, good morning, so-and-so. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you? Is everything okay? You are going to then do good to that person, showing that you are making the effort, you are investing your entire being into what God wants you to do. For example, if you have a grudge against somebody, go talk to that person, ask them for forgiveness. Yes, that's it. Forgive. I know that you are right, but it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. What matters is that you forgive, because then you cleanse, you purify yourself, you wash yourself, so then you can receive the Holy Spirit. This is the idea of this fast of Daniel from this Saturday midnight, for 21 days. Whoever wants will go, who doesn't want it will stay behind. Whoever is willing to pay the price, then do it. Those who don't, then forget about it. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.